Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. And the Big 12 SEC Challenge presented by Continental Tire. From our sold out WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, it is the Tigers of Missouri out of the SEC taking on the 14th ranked Mountaineers from the Big 12. Once that Tim McCormick had play, Matthew and Tim, one of the best rebounders in the country, plays for West Virginia, Oscar Shibway. At 6'9", 260, the most dominant offensive rebounder in college basketball has exploded onto the scene as a reliable double-double producer for West Virginia. A manly presence protecting the rim, plays with tremendous joy and energy, and more than anything else, I look at him as a pro playing in the college game. Just a freshman, somebody to keep an eye on today and throughout the rest of the season. So this is the first of five straight Big 12 SEC Challenge games today on ESPN. We think this is going to be a good one. Missouri stepping out of conference after a 1-5 start in the SEC. And it's going to be interesting to see what the game plan is for the Tigers as they try to pull an upset. Well, if you like your basketball physical and tough and aggressive, sit back. You're going to enjoy this one. Missouri. Top 30 in college basketball and scoring defense. West Virginia, number one in the Big 12 in the category of field goal percentage defense. These teams are tough. And West Virginia, one of the most improved teams in the country. Already 15 wins on the year. That's the win total they had from all of last season. And Clay, 50 days from right now is Selection Sunday, and Joe Lenardi says that West Virginia is currently a number two. There's Conzo Martin, the head coach of Missouri in his third season. And the legend Bob Huggins in his 13th year as head coach of the Mountaineers. A win today ties him with Adolph Rupp for seventh on the all-time wins list at 800. 76. You talk to Bob and he tell you it's impossible. I'm not that old. It, it, it shouldn't be that high. But that's the case. Missouri in gold. West Virginia in gray. The officials Gary Maxwell, Kip Kissinger, and Brooks Wells. Great energy in here today. And we're underway. Shibwe wins the opening tip for the Mountaineers. Rebounding will be critical. These are two teams that do their best work on the glass. Neither one of them, though, shooting great from the perimeter. They work it quickly inside, and the first shot is missed by Jermaine Haley. As you look at the Missouri starting five, they've got three Smiths in there for you. Drew Smith, Mitchell Smith, Mark Smith. They're not related. Pickett and Nico. Round it out. It defensively, West Virginia plays aggressive. It's the best thing that they do. Off the knee of Drew Smith and out of bounds to West Virginia. Really no deception in what Bobby Huggins' team is trying to do. Yeah, we saw the aggressive on-ball defense, but they are going to try to force feed the ball into their big guys. These are the best tandem in the Big 12. West Virginia 9-0 inside this building this year. They blew out Texas here on Monday night, 97-59. They shot 51%. Everything went the Mountaineers' way in that game. It, it was really an impressive feat. They made Texas, it looked to me like they quit. They really did. And when you talk about the energy in this building, they are undefeated, and I believe that this arena is worth 10 or more points with the way they play. <laughs> it could be worth that many today, that's for sure. Shot clock winding down on Jordan McCabe. Haley, long three. And here comes Missouri. They've had some pretty good wins this year at Temple over Illinois, beat Florida. But overall, it's been a tough year. This might help turn things around if they can pluck an upset on the road. Uh, these are teams that are going to get better. Remember, Missouri returns everybody except one senior, and West Virginia will be better too. They're very young. Around the high ball screen. 
There's Mitchell Smith. His game is usually around the rim, but he can shoot from distance. And there's the West Virginia starting five. And of course, Oscar Sheboy, the freshman, has everybody talking, not just in the Big 12, but around the country. Well, what they do is they, they know who they are. Their priority is going inside. Nice double. And a nice hook shot from Sheboy. Clay, this is not West Virginia that we saw with Daxton Miles and Javon Carter. It's more of a half-court trapping defense, but still just as effective with their size. Smith will try again from range, and again comes up empty. Running the floor, the Mountaineers and the big O. The really big O with the flush. Turnaround jumper on the baseline for Reed Nico, the 6'10 senior from Minnesota. Finally gets the Tigers on the board. And the value of that basket for Missouri, you get a shot of confidence, but you can also get back and set up that really good half-court D. Shots just haven't been falling for Missouri. They're coming off a two-point home loss to Texas A&M on Tuesday, so hopefully they can get their shot right today. Certainly it's going well early for Sheboy. Talking to Bob Huggins, he's not surprised by Sheboy's performance. He gets better every day. And a big part of that is getting a chance to practice against Derek Culver. Actually, the games get easier than the practices. <laughs> That's a big body to go against every day in practice. Culver 6'10", 255 pounds. McCabe nearly had his pocket picked by Drew Smith, who leads the SEC in steals. Now, one of the reasons that fans are really excited here this week is because McCabe looked so good against Texas the other day, specifically keeping the turnovers down, Tim. And double-figure scoring. They've got three point guards. Just ahead of me! And it's 7-2, West Virginia. The most important question today for Missouri fans, do the Tigers look composed against this pressure D? If not, they're not going to have a chance to win this game. Mark Smith, their best outside shooter. They work it around. Watson sees it swim out, and Haley plucks the rebound. And here comes West Virginia again. Fast ahead to Shebway, and he's fouled. First timeout. And Missouri needs a blow. Mitchell Smith just picked up a second foul. Mizzou down to five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tiger for what you do. Car challenge presented by Continental Tire. Not a lot of elbow room in this place today. WVU Coliseum. It's a 7-2 lead for West Virginia. They've hit their last three shots. They got the crowd into it early, Tim. And it feels like what we saw from West Virginia on Monday night. West Virginia is among the best in college basketball with Final Four potential. Here's why. Number two in the nation in field goal percentage defense. Outstanding top 10 in rebounding and if you look at their post attack it's dominant in transition it might be the best thing they do they can beat you in so many different ways despite being the least experienced team in the big 12 but again oscar shibway has been a game changer for bob huggins you can see the career numbers yeah i was a bit surprised because i i asked Bob Huggins. How do Shibwe and Culver compare to some of the best you've ever coached? And he mentioned that Ohio State he had Herb Williams and Jim Smith at the power positions. He said that his big guys right now are the best 
that he's ever coached, and they're more skilled than Williams and Smith. That's high praise. Shibway gets to the line a lot, so does Culver, the two bigs. They're not particularly good foul shooters as we get our first West Virginia foul, and it's going to go against Emmett Smith. Or excuse me, Emmett Matthews. And conversely, free throw shooting is the best thing that Missouri does. They've made 56 of their last 57 free throws. Again, not the press Virginia Volt, but they still pull it out once in a while. Missouri breaks the press. Watson takes it in deep, but missed the shot. It'll stay with Mizzou. The luxury item for West Virginia is the fact that they have so much depth. Bob Huggins is watching his guards. He's got seven of them. If somebody's not bringing great energy, he just goes to the next one. Cold shooting start for the Tigers here to begin. They have lost five of their last six. And not having their 6'10 center, Jeremiah Tillman, has really hurt here in recent weeks. He's out for the seventh time in the last eight games. And they could really use his defense against these two bigs of West Virginia. You would have to say that Tillman is the one guy that Conzo Martin could not afford to lose. He's a rim protector, strong rebounder, really offers the only potential inside scoring. There he is in the gray t-shirt. They're hoping to get him back in a couple of weeks. Watson got the rebound and then he's fouled. And he'll go to the line. Thomas on Derek Culver is first. It's the first foul on Derek Culver. The line for the Tigers shooting two. Torrance, Torrance Watson is an excellent shooter. Set the freshman record for threes last year and had that potential game winner in their last game against Texas A&M. Yeah, Clay, I'm not really sure what you do as a coach when you've got really good shooters that aren't shooting well. Now, Conzo Martin's trying to figure it out. He's got the talent on his team. It's just they're not falling right now. Especially from three-point range, they've really struggled. Matthews misses from three. Osa Boyan with the rebound for West Virginia. Everybody can rebound for these Mountaineers, including Osa Boyan, who comes off the bench. He is known as a great defender, but... He contributes in other ways as well. There's Pinson now for Missouri. Watson cut off by Culver. Shot clock under 10. Pinson for three. And that's a bad sign for Mizzou. Xavier Pinson, the athletic sophomore from Chicago, just 9 of 45 from three on the year. As you take a look at the Big 12 SEC Challenge, some of the games throughout the day. 11 plus hours of coverage of this challenge on ESPN. You don't have to leave the couch today, Tim. Uh, I'm really anxious to see what happens with Kansas. After the suspensions, their depth is going to be questioned. Going up against Tennessee, who in my opinion, is the best defensive team this year in the SEC. Two really good defensive teams, but you're right now that Kansas is shorthanded. Great opportunity for the Volunteers to go into Lawrence and maybe pull off an upset. Harler gets it in. Haley, nice. Off the window. Jermaine Haley. I promise you, this is not going as Conzo Martin anticipated. He knew that they would be tough in the paint, but he just did not anticipate his team not being able to make shots at the other end. Missouri won for its last nine from the field. Brown goes inside to Nico. In a two-man game with Brown. Now Pinson with three to shoot. Extra pass. Pickett scrambling. Got it off ahead of the buzzer. 
And Nico keeps it alive. Brown from three. Missouri can't buy a bucket. Well, at times, it looks like West Virginia has six defenders out there. And finally, West Virginia forces the Missouri turnover. Kobe Brown, the 6'7 freshman, has a great future, but he'd like to hit a shot right now. So would a lot of guys for Missouri. It's just not happening. They credit the Mountaineers' defense. And as they come into their next series on offense, I mentioned earlier, I believe they have Final Four potential. All the ingredients are there, but there are two areas that I'd like to see them tighten up. Number one, they're the leader in Big 12 turnovers, and their perimeter game a little bit too erratic for my liking. Inside, Shibwe, a little strong. Rebound pulled down by Jackson, the freshman out of Detroit. Xavier Pinson kicks it to the corner. Mark Smith, step back three, draws an iron. When you watch Missouri not being able to make shots, hard to imagine two weeks ago they dropped 91 against Florida. But they're out to a 1 for 13 start today. In and out for Harlan. West Virginia's cooled off a little bit too from the field, and that's kept Missouri within arm's reach. Javon Pickett, he's kind of the glue guy for this Missouri team. Gives off to Pinson. Jackson from the corner. One for 14 shooting start. McBride, right away into Sheba. Another miss. Jackson, the stick back, and boy, Missouri needed that. that. Shooting gets contagious, and Missouri's going to have to find a way to get inside. Big bucket from a confidence standpoint for Jackson. Averaging just a couple of minutes per game is Jackson. And another freshman on the other side, Miles Deuce McBride having a great rookie season. Double figures in eight of the last nine games. Without Tillman, this Missouri team really one-dimensional. Jackson keeps it alive. That's gonna be an offensive foul. Time out here in Morgantown. West Virginia has controlled this game from the opening tip. Oscar Shibwe out to a great start. Challenge games on ESPN and the ESPN app in their first game since the brawl. Number three, Kansas hosting Tennessee at the Fog at 4 Eastern. Then Coach Cal and number 15, Kentucky, taking on number 18, Texas Tech in Lubbock. And... And 8 o'clock tonight, number one Baylor in Gainesville scoring off against Florida. Baylor and Kansas, both number one seeds according to Joe Lenardi, our bracketologist. And remember, Baylor went into Lawrence and won. I think that Scott Drew has the best quartet of guards in all of college basketball. Being number one is is not a great not, thing not this good. year. Baylor's the seventh different number one team. And that's going to continue, especially because Baylor has a tough game going to Florida. 14-6 West Virginia, number 14 in the nation. Been dominant so far. Culver, turn around left hand, left it short. And Mitchell Smith controls the rebound, hands off to Drew Smith. Axel Okongo has checked in. Seven-footer from Paris for Mizzou. Almost turned over as Taz Sherman got a hand on it. The junior out of Missouri City, Texas. Again, just aggressive defense by these Mountaineers. I look at playing West Virginia. It's a real sign of... 
testing your manhood and your maturity. Shot clock. Jab three. Mitchell Smith looked at his feet to make sure he was behind the line. Missed it anyway. And the three-point shooting has been abysmal here for the Tigers to start. 0 for 8 from 3. Culver looking for help. And he threw it off the foot of Javon Pickett. It's ironic to me that West Virginia struggles so much with turnovers. Wouldn't you think that because they practice against each other and face that intense pressure every single day, wouldn't you think they'd get really good at low turnovers? And they had 18 in Manhattan, Kansas about a week ago. That really upset Huggins. They cut back on those the other night against Texas. Culver, the reverse. Great athletic move by the big man, Derek Culver. Wow. And that comes off an offensive rebound. At times, the best offense for the Mountaineers is just shoot it, miss it, and go get it. Shibway and Culver first and third, respectively, in the Big 12 in rebounding. Culver last year led the conference in offensive rebounding and right now the top two rebounders in the Big 12 are Shibwe and Culver. Last time that happened was Texas with P.J. Tucker and LaMarcus Aldridge in 2006. They lob it to Nico and he has it blocked by Culver. That's not Sheboy's game. Missed it badly. Sherman got the miss and puts it in. Junior college All-American last year, Taz Sherman. He's on the scoreboard. And it's the biggest lead for West Virginia. So 6-0 run here for the Mountaineers. And Missouri is 2 of 18 from the field. That shot fake, Drew Smith draws the foul on Chase Harler, the senior out of West Virginia. Doesn't this feel a lot like West Virginia versus Texas earlier this week? Yeah. The length, so impressive. West Virginia has two 6'7 guys in their starting lineup, and two at 6'10. They've got their half court trap, then they fall back into a man. The coverage is excellent. The help is astounding. There's Drew Smith getting aggressive. And that's really what Conzo Martin wants, Tim. He was telling you and I yesterday, we want Drew Smith, the transfer from Evansville, to take charge more often. He's our best player. And and right now they need him. He's a really good player, but I think he wants to try to get his teammates involved. That'll change as he gets older. Shot clock. Off the turnover, McBride plays it in. And Missouri just doesn't have an answer for this West Virginia D. Four points for the freshman, McBride. Pinson hands it off, and Brown is fouled. And he'll shoot when we come back. It's an 8 nothing run for the Mountaineers here in Morgantown. 26-year-old future Hall of Famer got started at Akron in 1984 at the age of 30. And a nice run there before going to Cincinnati where he really made a name for himself. Had a one-year stopover in Manhattan, Kansas before coming back home to West Virginia. And again, a win today ties him with Adolph Rupp for seventh on the all-time wins list at 876. He's been to 24 national tournaments, a couple of Final Fours. Again, he's eligible for the Hall of Fame this year. I, I think it's a lead pipe cinch. It's a must, an absolute must. And when I think of Bob Huggins, 
the word culture comes to mind, one of the strongest in college basketball. The players know the expectation. And when you think about West Virginia basketball, year after year, everybody knows they play extraordinarily hard. Well, maybe that's a way, Tim, for Missouri to get out of their little funk. Get to the line more. Kobe Brown hits both free throws. They're the best free throw shooting team in the SEC. The lob deflected by Nico. Here come the Tigers on the run. They've got numbers. Pinson flips it up. Misses the shot. Couple of tip backs don't go. It's that kind of day for Mizzou. Well, if you're missing layups, you're probably not making threes. Big Karam comes out for Osuboyan. He's going to try and feed Logan Rout, and the former walk-on bobbled it. And they'll give it back to Mizzou. Ooh, that was a nice entry pass, too. Fourth turnover for West Virginia. Tennessee, Kansas coming up later today. Good one tonight in Lubbock, Kentucky. And Texas Tech head-to-head -head top 25 in this Big 12 SEC Challenge. Again, full court pressure by the Mountaineers. Missouri won for, for its last 18 from the field. A drought of four and a half minutes without a field goal. Finally, Torrance Watson hits, and he hits a three to boot. I like the adjustment. Last night at practice, Conzo Martin said the game plan is if we struggle against their pressure, he wants to go with a three-guard lineup. Watson, a product of Whitfield High School in St. Louis. Always wanted to be a Tiger. Osuboyan pops into the lane. Culver, an offensive board. They are just so good on the glass, specifically the offensive glass. And then a foul away from the ball on West Virginia. Three-second violation, and that's the fifth turnover. If, if I was going to pick one word to describe the Mountaineers, it would be macho. They are so yeah. big and strong and aggressive. A lot of size, especially up front. And Nico double teamed. And that's going to be on Emmett, Emmett Matthews. That's the second on him. Second. You know, Emmett Matthews is a guy that could be a, a season-long X factor for Bob Huggins' squad. You know, we were talking to him. Very pleased how Matthews kind of broke out of his slump against Texas on Monday. I keep thinking of Matthews. He had 28 against Texas Tech last year in the Big 12 tournament. Offensive rebound by Trey Jackson. He's having a good first half here. And he's fouled. <laughs> Second on Culver. Missouri gets an offensive rebound. Huggins is furious. Sheboy, get in the game. <laughs> yep. Get the big O off the bench. Pinson penetrates, kicks to the corner. Brown for three. Well, now three things are starting to warm up for Missouri. Kobe Brown with his first field goal. They are happy to have him back. He did not play Tuesday against Texas A&M. Was out with a bout of the flu. And now it's a 9-0 run for Missouri. And a traveling call as the turnovers are starting to mount for the Mountaineers. The crowd was electric. The ball pressure was intense. It looked like a blowout, and all of a sudden, nice response by Conzo Martin. And the lead for West Virginia has shrunk to five. They led by as many as 14. Blocked by Shebway. Kept alive, Pinson got it to Jackson. He has it blocked again by Oscar Shebway. 
McNeil in transition thought about pulling the trigger. They'll set up McBride. Sheepway tracks it down, and that's what he does. Well, it's as simple as I can put it. West Virginia does not shoot the ball well from three. Haley hemmed in on the baseline, finds McNeil in the corner. And a foul underneath that's going to go against Sheepway. A pretty good defensive sequence by the Missouri Tigers. When you watch, they play this Big Ten style. Gene Cady influence, contesting shots, moving bodies, and I do not see how that could possibly be a foul against Oscar Sheboy. First foul against Sheboy, the 6'9 freshman from the Congo. He played at Kennedy Catholic High School in Hermitage, Pennsylvania, the same high school as Sags Kanate, who had a short injury play career while at West Virginia. But Shibwe disappointed by that call. And that's been a problem for him at times this year, Tim, is getting into early foul trouble. He's so big and strong, and he attacks the offensive glass. I would say that Oscar Shibwe is one of the top five players in all of college basketball in the category of hard to referee. He bangs nonstop, he's relentless, and he and Culver have this 100% commitment to go to the offensive glass every single shot. After looking at the monitor, they're gonna send Nico to the line for the one and one. And he misses the front end. Well, that's a surprise. That's the best thing that Missouri does. Free throws. And Nico's not bad for a big guy. 75% on the year. There's 77% as a team. Haley had it taken right off of his fingers. And Brown coming back up the floor is fouled. When you watch Missouri play defense, to me, they, they remind me a lot of Tony Bennett and Virginia. They close the lane very well. They communicate. They're connected. Very well coached in the fundamentals. And I, I like the fact that you know, there's a statement, little things make a big difference. Conzo Martin makes his players stay in a stance active hands and they really talk well they're allowing under 62 points per game second best in the sec the lower scoring that this game is the better and they've kind of mucked it up here the last several minutes they pulled it within four not afraid to grind for sure this is brandon napper now for west virginia Sophomore out of South Charleston. He rises up for three and comes up empty. Brown penetrates. Tied up. Lost it. And a takeaway by the elite defender, Osaboy. Sheboy is going to be called for the travel. And the crowd can't believe it. Bob can't believe these eight turnovers for West Virginia. He has Peter Day that uh, should be good to go next week. He had surgery on his finger a couple of weeks ago. And it's been surprising. A six seed in the East. I expected a lot more out of the Sixers. Well, they get Joel back and it should improve things dramatically, I would think. Under four minutes to go here first half. It's a four-point lead for West Virginia. Missouri started 2 of 20 from the field, but they're on a 10 nothing run. The lob to Jackson from Drew Smith. And Jackson is fouled. He'll head to the strike. And that's on Gabe Osaboy and his second person. Jackson has a lot of potential. Really thrives in an athletic up-tempo game. And how about that pass from Drew Smith? I, I thought it was good. I, his head was up. He saw the lane. The pass was right where it needed to go. 
and a missed free throw. So this is a trip where the ball needs to go inside to Shibwe. Big advantage, 14 to two points in the paint for the Mountaineers. Shibwe battling with Nico. McCabe trying to get it to him. And so Saboyan spinning. Nice pocket pass. I mean, Saboyan is not just a defender. I think we've seen that here today already. Oh, he's carved out of granite. I, I don't know how you get around him. If they force feed the ball, he will have a huge game. Watson. And that pass to Jackson failed to click, and it goes out of bounds. And that's the sixth turnover for the Tigers. One of the deficiencies of players today, and it has to do with the fact that we don't have as many good post players. The game is moving towards analytics and threes. Perimeter players just aren't as good anymore at entering the ball into the low post. That's something West Virginia is getting better at. Sheboy calls for it. Reed Nico got his hand up. Made it a tougher shot. And Sheboy does miss it. Mark Smith, catch and shoot. Love to see that. Three pointer by Mark Smith. The Illinois transfer, 39% from three. That's third best in the SEC. And we've got a three point game. As West Virginia is now in a one for seven shooting slow. They almost turned it over again. Missouri has gotten back in this game by scoring in transition. A really good idea to try to go against a great defense and hit before they even set up. You said before the game, a transition defense would be huge for both of these teams today. Yeah, because you're playing against an elite half-court defense. Yeah. You don't want to play against that. And also, surprisingly, Missouri has an advantage on the offensive glass points. I didn't expect that. Kobe Brown, the freshman from Huntsville, Alabama, checks back in for Mizzou. Again, no Jeremiah Tillman out uh, with a stress fracture in his left foot. Haley with the rebound and that foul going back up. So Jermaine Haley will tow the line. 15 foul on Missouri, first on Brown. Coming up on the Jeep. Halftime report, Kentucky, Texas Tech, and can Auburn get back on track? Kevin Connors and company will have it for you coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah. The last time that Kentucky went to Lubbock, 1965, the high score in that game was Pat Riley. Is that right? Yes. I was not around for that. I'd like to say I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Get a few years on me. Not many, though. Five-point game. Under two minutes to go in the half. Pinson. For Drew Smith. And he's fouled. Almost got it to roll in. And Drew Smith. Will go to the line for the first time in this game. As Shibwe just had foul number two on the day. At the line for Missouri, Drew Smith. Of all the great foul shooters that Missouri has, this guy's the best at 90%. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must have for Big 12 fans. Three great games coming your way Wednesday. Starting at 8 Eastern, West Virginia going to Lubbock against number 18 Texas Tech, Oklahoma K-State, and Texas and TCU Wednesday night exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. You can sign up today at ESPNplus.com. Well, Drew Smith is the Tigers' best player, and last night I saw something that made me even more impressed. 
as the players left the court to go to the bus, Drew Smith walked behind the benches and was picking up the tape of his teammates and papers and cups and... I like attention to detail. In and out for McCabe. Haley got the loose ball. And it's tipped out of bounds by Brown. Yeah, Kanzu Martin said to us, he is the most humble guy. He doesn't realize he's a star, and that's what the teammates love about. He, he averages 12 points per game. Kanzo Martin wants between 15 and 20 per game. Don't you think most guys would love to have their coach say, yeah. shoot more, you're not shooting enough, get aggressive. He's coming off back-to-back 18-point -back games. Going to roll out of bounds again. 54 seconds to go in the half. Mentioned that Conzo Martin comes for background. Gene Cady, Purdue. They play really good post defense. I think of Jim Rowinski and Scheffler and Russell Cross, all the big guys. Conzo Martin is really good teaching post defense. Some great names there. Shot clock at five for Deuce McBride. Watched by Brown. McBride floats it up. Tipped up by Culver, rolls off again. And Drew Smith will clear it for Pinson. Pinson attacks, flicks it up and Whoa. in. We said he was athletic. Hit before the defense sets up. And we've got a one point ball game. The way this one started. And the way it was trending for Mizzou, would you think that with 17 seconds to go in the half, we'd have a one-point difference? Timeout here in Morgantown. Shot of the half if they want to. They work it inside. Over. Misses from in close. And now what plagued Missouri early is plaguing West Virginia. Smith to Smith. And we've got a one-point game at the half as Missouri woke up and has made it interesting here in Morgantown. Missouri and West Virginia at the break. Coming up after this commercial timeout, Kevin Connors and the crew have the Jeep halftime report. Packed house here in Morgantown, Saturday showcase presented by 5 Hour Energy. And the Big 12 SEC Challenge presented by Continental Tire. One point game at the half alongside Tim McCormick on Clay Matvick. Missouri came out of the gates and they did not shoot it well. 21% shooting in the first half, yet they're in this game. Conzo Martin's team brought a mature approach. They dealt with the heat from the Mountaineers. Yeah. Three point defense really good, low turnovers. I thought that, that it was a really improbable comeback, but I like what they did. West Virginia, even though they did not shoot great in the first half either, and they had some droughts. Oscar Shibway, you can see that this freshman is going to have a great career. Beautiful delivery off the double team. He impacted the game in every way imaginable. He's in transition. Low post, finishing around the rim. He had nine points, four rebounds, fighting for that inside position. His teammates know that when the big man goes to work, he deserves the ball. The third McDonald's All-American in West Virginia history and the first since Greg Simpson back in 1996. They are so excited about him here in town. Yep. And only halfway through the season. There, there's really no nonsense about his game. There's no fluff. There's no extras. He just works the entire time that he's out there. He makes people better. He came into the game with 75 offensive rebounds. Kevin Jones, who was a great here at West Virginia, set the single season record with 141. That seems like that's going to go down this year if Shibway stays on track. This is a half that Bobby Huggins is going to need Derek Culver to come with that aggression inside. Only one for five. A lot of space available. Emmett Matthews got his hand in the passing lane. Almost forced a turnover. Missouri has not led in this contest. Out of the corner, Drew Smith draws the contact and 
That's not Derek Culver, and that's his third. Oh, on, so now it's Bob Huggins Derek has Derek to worry about some foul trouble here, potentially with one of his big men. Clay, we spent a lot of time at halftime talking about how did Missouri do this. This might be a case where the smaller, quicker opponent is creating problems with their speed for the much bigger and massive interior play for Mountaineers. Now another foul away from the ball, and it's going to be on Jermaine Haley. And the reason that's important, if it continues and Missouri gets into the bonus, they are a much better free throw shooting team down the stretch. 77% as a team. West Virginia just 64%. Xavier Pinson, he carried it. That's a turnover. Seventh turnover on the Tigers. That's one of those plays that in the stat sheet, it's not going to show up. Jordan McCabe has not had an impact in this game scoring, but his defense forced a turnover. Osuboyan in the game, Culver on the bench. Kick the track down by Shibwe. They work it inside. Haley. And the follow dunk by Oscar. Pinson attacks on the other end. Numbers for West Virginia. Matthews. That's a jump ball. Great defense by Drew Smith getting better. Wow, I did not expect that. Now, when you've got your hand on the top of the ball, that's an excellent defensive play in transition, moving in reverse. Poked away. The SEC steals leader ahead to Pinson. The follow. And Mitchell Smith cleans it up for the Tigers. Those are the first points for Mitch. Did we get excited enough about Shibwe's dunk? I don't know if we did or not. <laughs> He's been one of the bright spots here today for West Virginia. Let's uh, go back to that follow hammer dunk. Well, you don't see this very often. This is in traffic. You've got about eight guys in the middle. That was a strong and powerful statement. Gabe Osaboyan at the foul line here for the Mountaineers. Shibwe averaging a double-double in Big 12 play. He has seven on the season. And, you know, he's got 11 points, five rebounds right now. He's getting a deserved blow over there on the West Virginia bench, but... <laughs> now, and I understand what all the buzz was about. Yes. It's my first chance to see him in person. It's completely possible he's on the bench right now because Bobby Huggins didn't like his transition defense. It could be he's working so hard, but it also might be a message being sent. Defense first, always with hooks. And it's a McCabe foul. He can't believe it. And these team fouls are starting to mount. It Good position, don't reach. Defensive integrity. 99% of what Jordan McCabe did there was pretty good. Pinson doesn't get the bounce. And there's a foul underneath. That's going to go Missouri against Nico. Reed Nico, the 6'10 senior out of Maple Grove, Minnesota, with his first foul. And West Virginia will get it back up three. Little full court pressure by Pinson. Teams that press don't like to be pressed themselves. Missouri has lost five of their last six games trying to pull an upset here on the road in Morgantown. Culver missed everything. And Mitchell Smith is able to clear it for Mizzou. Here come the Tigers. Drew Smith leading the way. Bad pass. That is the second over and back for Mizzou here today. And the 10th Tigers turnover. As the second half game plan starts to materialize, 
I'd like to throw out this nugget. West Virginia will win the game if they attack the rim. With Jeremiah Tillman out, there is no shot blocking, not much resistance. Oh, Shaboyan tried to look inside for Culver. He was well defended. Culver gets the rebound. And he'll get a trip to the line as Torrance Watson is called for the personal foul. That's number two on Torrance. Watch on the weak side. Culver is a dominant rebounder. And we had a nice conversation today before the game. And he told me flat out, Bobby Huggins changed my life. Last year as a freshman, he was sat down, suspended, did not play at all in the non-conference. Why? said he was immature he missed classes and the turning point of his life is Bob Huggins made him accountable Bob Huggins really proud of Culver and said he has a 375 GPA and has not been late for one meeting one practice nothing nobody better at delivering tough love than Bob Huggins that's for sure Culver gets to the line a lot but he's got a good foul shooter. Can't get from the outside. So they exchange two for three, and they'll take that every time. But McCabe is called for another foul. Jordan McCabe is called for the first one, his second. And number five on the team. I like the three pointer, but I love Gabe Osaboyan and the offensive glass. He went. He got an offensive rebound, and the best time to get an open three is against that scramble defense. Mitchell Smith wide open, can't deliver. And Culver skies in for another board. Trying to go inside, Osaboy and threw it right away. Pinson for three. Emmett Matthews, and that is a blocking foul against Missouri. Matthews is shaken up. Foul number five, Mitchell Smith. Of the third, team foul number four. Mitchell Smith and Matthews collided. Wait, he was up so high. It's almost like he free fall from about five feet up. Very acrobatic, a game changer, aggressive. Notice how high he was and landed right on that hip. Matthews with an opportunity, if he can shake this off, to get his first points of the day. Coming off his best game in over a month Evan on Monday Matthews against Texas. Eight points, four rebounds. But he was scoreless in the first half here today. You know, next week with the Super Bowl coming up, imagine what a running back feels like on Monday morning. That's the way that Matthews is going to feel tomorrow morning when he wakes up. <laughs> feel a little sore. And the free throw production hasn't been there this year for West Virginia. And it hasn't been great today. Let me forecast for you. Right now, Conzo Martin is making some mental notes. If this game is close down the stretch, he's going to put this Mountaineer team on the line because they cannot make free throws. Matthews gets the back in. Chase Harler. West Virginia 6 for 10 today at the line. Here comes Chase Harler. Playing his 104th career game today. One of the crowd favorites here in Morgantown. So Missouri down one at the half. Down seven now. Shot fake, Jackson. Just one and done.
Culver across the lane, slashing in James Harwood. And it's an 8-0 run now for the Mountaineers. This feels like a big possession. On the verge of a double-digit deficit, Missouri has to keep it close right now. Poked out of bounds, Missouri will keep it, 10 on the shot clock. When we come back, West Virginia, a little breathing room now. ESPN watching the Big 12 SEC Challenge presented by Continental Tire. 34-25 West Virginia leading here in Morgantown over on ESPNU. Auburn on top of Iowa State. That game is in the second half. When we're done here, we're going to take you to Austin, Texas. LSU and the Longhorns still licking their wounds after a big bad loss here on Monday night. Shaka Smart called the 38-point loss to West Virginia embarrassing. It's going to be interesting watching these races. I think Auburn wins the SEC, but Kentucky will win the tournament. They've got a lot of upside. Here's Mitchell Smith from three. That shot hasn't been falling for him. One for eight to start the second half with three turnovers for Missouri. 11 rebounds now for Culver. Here's Culver now. Showing what he could do offensively, too. Hook shot didn't go. Foul on the floor. It was against Mizzou. That was the first time that Culver has not been double teamed in the post. I did not like the shot at all. He could have continued angling and getting to the rim level. Instead, he took an off-balance, fall-away jump hook. Culver averages 11-9. And uh, Haley is clobbered. Missouri foul. That's going to be the second straight foul on Trey Jackson. He's got three now. He and Mitchell Smith both with three. Jermaine Haley shooting two. Seven points in the first half for Haley. Later today. Three great Big 12 SEC Challenge games, including Tennessee, Kansas, Kentucky, Texas Tech. That's a head-to-head -head top 25. And number one Baylor in the nightcap against Florida. Yeah, I always believe that Scott Drew is very undervalued as a coach. Yeah. Ran the zone for all those years. Now he's a great man-to-man -man coach. And how good is Jared Butler? One of the best guards in the Big 12, without a doubt. Now the lead's back to double digits for West Virginia. It's a 10-0 run. Another turnover for Mizzou. Things are starting to get out of hand for the Tigers again. Miles McBride, freshman with a pretty touch. Another giveaway. Andrew Smith called for the... Foul at midcourt. Missouri foul ball number 12. The first Missouri question I Missouri. asked today, keep an eye on Missouri's ball handlers. Do they look composed? To start the game, the answer was no. To start the second half, no once again. Wait, there's half started, Tim. You know, we thought that the Missouri team fouls would mount and it would be Missouri at the line, but it's kind of Turn the other way. The tables turned on the Tigers. Well, the more physical team is being rewarded right now. And on the glass, in the post, Culver and Shibre make life easier for their teammates. And look at the shoulders on Conzo Martin. He, he still looks like he could play yeah, he a little does. bit. We asked him yesterday, we were talking about the, the extensive weightlifting program and nutrition program his players are on. He does the exact same things as his players. And I love the buy-in. You know, if your coach is in there sweating and grinding, and the players have to do it and really respect the direction. Martin, 48 years old, a 22-year cancer survivor. 
But his team is down big now. They need a shot to fall. It's not going to happen here. Mark Smith with an air ball on his three attempt. The lead is 15. Mountaineers looking for an early knockout here in the second half. And another Missouri foul. Missouri foul. This is the fourth head coaching job for Conzo Martin. He's already had stops at Missouri State, Tennessee, Cal, and now back in the SEC's. Got sneakers on today, as all the coaches do. Coaches versus cancer. And that is a thing dear to his heart as a cancer survivor. He'll try and get things squared away as they're down 15 here in Morgantown. Plus coverage of Tigers' third round to Torrey Pines and all the big moments from UFC Fight Night Sports Center, midnight Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Clay Matvick, Tim McCormick back here in Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Mountaineers have regained control of this game. It was a one-point difference at the half and currently on a 14-0 run as Culver's at the line. You know, there's free throw misses, certainly something that you can poke a hole in here as far as not that. Culver can block shots. Maybe some frustration after missing the free throw. That is not his long suit, but on the defensive end, things like that certainly are his strength. And this right here is where you miss Jeremiah Tillman. Nico is serviceable, but he is more of a backup. Tillman probably finishes that. That's a tough break. Culver missed it. Haley cleaned it up. Haley. Doing some film work this week on Missouri. Their best ball offensively is when they go side to side. During this run, they've been very stagnant. Very few ball reversals. And now Culver with the steal. And the dunk. Watson wide open. Oh my. And the Tigers in a real tickler spot now. Their scoring drought, almost six minutes. The defense for West Virginia is making Missouri play faster than they want, faster than they're comfortable with. Parler from three. In and out. Culver had position, and Reed Nico fouled him. That's his third. Yeah, in transition, how nice is this? A sensational big man athlete. A-plus effort. Give him a gold star. He hasn't had a free throw today. That's the only thing he said he can poke a hole in when it comes to, when it comes to Culver and Sheboy, the two bigs. We're, we're being picky, though, right? Yes. <laughs> but you got to think, though, it, you know, especially come March, that that is something that could come back to hurt West Virginia. McBride, the freshman, really having a good day. His first three. And the lead is now 22. And the dunk by Okongo. Seven footer from Europe. Timeout again. The lead has swelled to 20 for the Mountaineers. All right, thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. There you see uh, Oscar Shibway 
getting ready to check back in for West Virginia. He had a seat real close to Bob Huggins for quite a while, Tim. It looked to me like his transition defense on one sequence was subpar. That's the beauty of having 12 deep. Bob Huggins is not afraid to use the bench as a teaching tool. And again, Sheboy, as good as he is, he's just a freshman. Culver 0 for 6 at the foul line. When you're 0 for 6, don't you maybe just bounce it a few times and shoot a jump shot? I don't know. You're, you're a 7 footer. You played in the NBA after your career at Michigan as Pinson banks it in. How were you uh, as a foul shooter? Because a lot of bigs aren't good at it. I was very good. Don't sound very humble though, do no. I? <laughs> How did you get to be very good? No, it's repetition. It's repetition in practice. It's repetition getting opportunities in the game. Culver missed the hook. Here's Taz from the short corner. Taz Sherman, one of the great games in college basketball. He's got four here in the game. Yep, yeah, you talked to Bob Huggins and he says, my big guys are getting a ton of reps in games. Certainly, and in practice, I mean, they draw 14 fouls combined per game. I mean, Culver and Chibwe are getting to the line a lot. They're fouling the other team's big guys right out of contest. And Culver trying to defend that one there. And another two for Pinson. Missouri has six points in the entire second half. Sherman missed the three. Pinson clears the rebound. And Drew Smith called for the offensive foul. That's the 12th turnover here on Missouri, and we still have 10 and a half to go. As we watch the big guys attack the offensive glass, there's a stat I want to share with you, and it's really impressive. The national average on the offensive glass, teams grab 28% of their own misses. For West Virginia, they're number one. They grab almost 40% of their missed shots. And Sherman. Sherman not missing his shots right now. All-American last year in junior college at Collin College in McKinney, Texas. Making an impact off the bench. In and out for Drew Smith. He hasn't taken many shots today. That's been part of the problem for Missouri this year. They want their leader to take more shots. He had a good look there. Just couldn't cash in. 20-point lead for the Mountaineers. Joe Lenardi says they're a two-seed as of today. How about Sherman? He's making a bit for more playing time. And the nice thing as an elite JC score, he's now getting used to the speed of D1. Jackson trying to go to the other side of the rim, and he draws contact doing so. A chance for Missouri to get some points as Shibwe picks up his third foul. I mean, it's 29 to 8 West Virginia since halftime. Do you think that Coach Huggins was a little confrontational with his guys at halftime? Hey, Ben. Uh, I do like the adjustment, though. What he's done in the second half is he has not played Shibwe and Culver together nearly as much. He's gone to a smaller, more modern, traditional lineup. Jackson gets them both. Missouri will be back home to face Georgia on Tuesday. Georgia has struggled under second-year head coach Tom Crean. Maybe a chance for Missouri to right the ship in Columbia. As Shibwe gets another rebound. And Jackson has four fouls from Missouri. Oscar Shibwe is strangulating on the offensive glass. He's the biggest, strongest guy in the building, and there's really no answer that Missouri would have. Clay, do you have worries, though, if 
we get into March, and West Virginia is playing somebody that can battle them on the board. I worry about their perimeter shooting and their ability to make free throws. Well, Shibway gets both there. 65% foul shooter on the year. And he hasn't had a bad scoring day. 13 points, 6 rebounds. Turned over. Taz lost control. Can he recover? Smith swats it away. Taz Sherman was in free flight but couldn't finish. And that looked to me like a travel, but his hustle was really strong. We got a technical foul. And it's called on Pinson. Said something that the official heard. Technical foul has been whistled against Missouri's number one. He's dribbling. It's I, I would call that a travel. You know, the, the technical foul on Pinson Normally, when a player gets a tee, you can look at their stat line, and the numbers usually are subpar. Happy players do not get technical fouls. Well, Pinson came into this game struggling shooting the ball, and he's had a tough afternoon today as well. That might be part of the problem, just some frustration. He's 3 of 11 shooting, and he is going to come out of the game Good piece of coaching. Twenty-three point lead. Falling away. Taz Sherman in and out. Here comes Missouri. Drew Smith probably has the green light now on every possession. Swatted out of there by Smith. Coming back defensively. Really good idea to try to get out in transition. Volleyball spike by Smith to start at both ends. Osaboyan. And he'll go to the line. And it's just wearing Missouri down. Right down to the nub. That's his fifth. Got so many guys that are athletic. Like you mentioned, the bench is so deep. They're just coming at you in waves. Nine have played. Um, nine have scored so far. Nine have a rebound. And they can go 12 deep. And Osaboyan is such a huge addition. Huggins said he plays so hard and makes us better. He's a glue guy, Arkansas transfer, and you know playing for Mike Anderson that he's got a defensive DNA. Got a waiver to play right away after the coaching change. I was reading through the notes. He, he's averaging five deflections per game. I mean, some guys don't average that in points or rebounds, he get five deflections again. Doesn't he remind you of a bigger version of Javon Carter in the bit. way that yeah. he can impact the game on the defensive end? West Virginia's had so many great defenders, especially in recent years, under Bob Huggins. Here's another pick, and it's Chase Harler with the takeaway. So we go under eight minutes. 14 Missouri turnovers. They have shot 22% from the field. Nice pass for Marlon. And Deuce McBride. Double figures here today. This feels so much like the beatdown against Texas earlier this week. It's a mismatch off the defensive end. The last 10 minutes of the first half, it wasn't like that for West Virginia. But yeah, I would agree with you. On balance. This game has been sheer domination for the Mountaineers. 58-33 here in Morgantown. Number six. After we're done here in Morgantown, we're going to take you out to Austin, LSU, and Texas. And then later, Tennessee, Kansas at four, Kentucky, Texas Tech at six. 
Baylor, Florida at eight. In the Big 12 SEC Challenge, the Big 12 has won four of the six challenges. You know, West Virginia has played one of the toughest schedules in the country. Their opponents have won 71% of their games. That's the highest percentage in the nation. You can see what they've got coming up at Texas Tech. They beat Tech here a few weeks ago. And then they host K-State. And K-State will be without Antonio Gordon, who will still be under suspension after the brawl in Lawrence. So that's uh, looking like a winnable game for West Virginia. No doubt, just a great start to this campaign. Now after today, they will be 10-0 and 0 at home. It's going to be hard to beat them in this building because of their defense. 0 for 8 for Missouri from 3 in the yeah. second half. 34 to 10 run. Now the field goal percentage defense for West Virginia has been stifling this year. 36%. Third nationally. They have held Missouri to 22% shooting today. So those numbers are going to tick up or tick down, as it were. <laughs> to the corner. And Watson. Three That's his second three. They have just had two few of those today. Did you see that? It was a three. It was a three for <laughs> Missouri. Uh, that's a reason to celebrate in the second half here. They were 9 of 35 the other night against Texas A&M from three. They're 4 of 22 today. So those ills continue. Ooh. McBride, the rookie, likes playing in front of this big crowd. He looks good. And every time a shot goes in, I get the sense that Mark Smith is celebrating because He's afraid that Oscar Shibwe is probably going to grab an offensive rebound if it misses. McBride is a product of Moeller High School in Cincinnati. There have been so many great athletes that have come out of Cincinnati Moeller. Bob Huggins, of course, he could still pluck guys out of that part of the country. His name still resonates in Cincinnati. But McBride led Moeller High School to a 29-0 record last year. And an Ohio State championship. You know, you talk to Bob, he says, this kid's a winner. I love that about him. It's in his DNA. You, you sense that Bob Huggins loves that football toughness. Yeah. And we talked to McBride. He told us that he takes shooting workouts three times per day. He comes in before class, after lunch, and then he comes back at night. Miles McBride, they call him Deuce. The way he shoots it, maybe he should be Trey. <laughs> He's got 13 points. This is Sean McNeil, three-point specialist. That's a long oh, two for Sean. Deal. Nation's top junior college scorer last year. 30 points per game at Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio. Mark Smith draws iron. And Missouri's struggling, but they're going to get a lot better as soon as Jeremiah Tillman gets back. And I think he's getting closer, hopefully, yeah. you know, within the next... 10 days or so. Yeah, they're hoping a couple weeks for sure. And, and that stress fracture. You know, you're a big man. Feet on big man, they don't heal easily. Everything that you do in basketball is with your feet. Yeah. When you run, you jump, you cut, you box out. So it's a very, very difficult injury to overcome. Driving, Watson floats it up and in. Drafted by Watson. West Virginia can get the ball into Sheboy in the low post whenever they want. This would be a good trip. They go inside to Haley instead, and he can't handle the pass. Checking in the Tigers, Axel Okongo. Congo is going to come back in for Missouri. Played junior college ball in Wyoming last year. Yeah, much better job so far with ball security for the Mountaineers. That's been their biggest issue. They lead the Big 12 
in that category. About 15 turnovers per game. Only two in the second half today. Yeah, 11 total, but you're right. And, and I think that's probably after a, a chewing out by Bob Huggins at halftime. And another tie-up. And the possession arrow will keep it on this end. Under four minutes to go. The lead is 22 for the Mountaineers. Back in a moment. ESPN's exclusive. LSU and Texas await. Ready to tip off in Austin. We'll take you there next. Mississippi State, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Kansas, Arkansas hosting TCU, and Texas A&M against Oklahoma State also later today. We've got all of the games covered for you on the ESPN networks. Five total today here on ESPN. It's the first of five. Haley ooh, flipped it to Shibwe, and he got hung up on Mark Smith. Went down hard, but it looks like he's going to be all right. I'm sure there were some fans in here who gasped when they saw their star player go down. In yeah, there was nothing malicious on that play. It's always dangerous when you land on your hands in a prone position. The referees want to take a look at it. They will not find anything. And as we enjoy the work of Oscar Shibwe and Derek Culver, maybe the most unusual strength of this Mountaineers team as we take another look. No contact. That was premeditated. Offensive rebounding is just such an impressive stat for West Virginia. They've missed 35 shots. That's not a lot. 19 of those were grabbed on the offensive boards. Yeah. It, it's such a, a luxury for Bob Huggins because your shooters can shoot without fear. Because if you miss it, it's okay because your big guys are probably going to corral the rebound. Shibwe already might be the best offensive rebounder in the country. He's just a freshman. He's the best that I've seen. And what makes it even more impressive is he shares the rebounding duties with Derek Culver. Fourteen points, eight rebounds for Shibwe today. Could still get his eighth double-double of the year. Three and a half to go. Watson trying to hand it off to Drew Smith. Loose on the floor, picked up by the Mountaineers. McBride, the layup. And Drew Smith is injured behind the play. That was the sequence in this entire game that will make Bobby Huggins smile. Diving on the floor, high pressure, junkyard dog defense, and then unselfishness, giving the ball up to a teammate for an easy layup. Yeah, that time Huggy gave him a high five coming off the floor. You don't see a lot of those no. from Huggy. <laughs> 16 turnovers forced by the Mountaineers. LSU and Texas getting underway now in Austin. We're out there next. Watson floats it up. No. Missouri has made 12 baskets today. They're 12 for 49. Short oh, corner, McNeil. McNeil. Well, will you repeat that statistic, please? Because that is so telling to me. 12 of 49, just under 25%. Huh. Well, this is the equivalent of a pitcher throwing a no-hitter. Now Bob Huggins wants a timeout. He's going to get some of the reserves in, and the crowd is going to go nuts. Here he comes, Spencer Mackey. The freshman walk-on who has become something of a legend here in Morgantown this year. He was carried off the court Monday night after hitting a three at the end of the Texas blowout. And he made Scott Van Pelt's best thing after the end of the day. And we'll see what he can do here for an encore. You don't see many guys get carried off the court 
in a 38-point blowout. Logan Rout, offensive rebound. It's a blocking foul. And McNeil will go to the line. It doesn't matter if you take Sheepway and Craver out. West Virginia still attacks the offensive glass. Sean McNeil, shooting two. I mean, you played on a lot of teams in your day, and you always had that guy that didn't get a lot of time on the floor. But he worked just as hard as everybody else in practice. And that's Spencer Mackey. Well, this is a sign of a really happy team. When everybody has a role, practices are so competitive, and when, when you get a chance to reward a guy like Mackey, especially in a, in a big environment game like this, it's a sellout against a really good Missouri team. So, yeah, it, it's a big moment for him. Crowd is going to want him to shoot it every time he touches the ball. Watson. He's going to end up with a pretty decent line. He's got three threes in this game. 13 points. He's the high scorer for the Tigers. Also has a couple of rebounds. Here's Mackey. He throws it up, and that's a partially blocked. Kept alive. Route. Backdoor cut. Halen. Missouri's defenders were watching Remain. Scott Van Pelt's report. Yeah, they were not going to let him get a shot off. That's right. Play oh, earlier Remain. today, I, I made the point that West Virginia has all of the ingredients of a potential Final Four team. Number two in field goal percentage defense. Top ten in rebounding. They have a dominant post game. They're strong in transition. I want to repeat, the only two areas that I feel like they need to solidify is their perimeter shooting, and there are plenty of options, and their ball security. Right now, 15 turnovers per game is too high and maybe the big guys you know tightening it up at the free throw line too yep i'll put that with shooting okay just over a minute to go west virginia gonna get win number 16 on the year they finished with 15 last year Mackey kisses it in they're all laughing because there's no way that was supposed to be a bank <laughs> He might get carried off again. Watson, another three. They're cheering him on, chanting his name. Spencer Mackey, the freshman walk-on. Are they going to be buying his shirt, his uniform at the bookstore? <laughs> that bounces off, much to the crowd's dismay. It's a pretty darn good shot. It really was. <laughs> 20 seconds to go. Watson, he stays hot from outside. Where was that in the first half when they really needed it? West Virginia. They are going to be reckoned with. throughout the rest of this season. 74-51 the final, and Bob Huggins now seventh on the all-time wins list, tied with Adolph Rupp with win number 876. The Big 12 and the SEC tied at one win apiece. Conference needs six wins to clinch the challenge. A very impressive win today for West Virginia. They are now 10-0 at home, and they'll be at Texas Tech on Wednesday. For Tim McCormick and our entire crew, I'm Clay Mack. Now we go out to Austin, Texas, LSU and the Longhorns.